Hello and welcome back to Chemistry It Is All That Matters and today what will matter is covalent molecules also known as molecular compounds and today we're going to go over how these covalent molecules form and the basics in naming these ionic or covalent molecules. So in covalent bonding we are dealing with bonds that are forming between two or more nonmetal atoms and these atoms will bond covalently by sharing pairs of electrons in order to complete their outer orbits. And we are looking for that rule of octet to become stable, similar to our noble gases. And this type of bonding, covalent bonding, is also known as molecular bonding. So when we are looking at covalent bonding, we are dealing with the elements to the right of the staircase. We are dealing with the non-metals, and this would also include hydrogen. And our first molecule that we look at will be the hydrogen molecule. Hydrogen, we recall, is one of, or is one of the diatomic elements, and hydrogen in its natural gas state will be found in pairs. And the reason is because hydrogen actually doesn't follow the rule of octet, it follows the rule of duet, looking for two electrons in its outer orbit. And right here we have a hydrogen atom, and notice we have one electron all by itself. But if we bring a second hydrogen, those two can pair, sharing that pair of electrons where both atoms feel like they have the two electrons necessary to be stable. This forms, of course, the H2 molecule, and this would form by a single bond between the two hydrogen atoms. If we look at the case for fluorine, and we take two fluorine atoms, fluorine has seven valence electrons, which means it has one empty space in its outer orbit. So by having the fluorine atoms share that pair of electrons in the middle, both atoms get the sense of having eight following the rule of octet. We now have an F2 molecule and each of those F atoms is held together by that single bond of sharing that pair of electrons in the middle. Let's look at oxygen. Now, oxygen has six valence electrons, meaning it has two empty spaces. So what oxygen will do is rearrange its electrons so that it forms a pair twice. And it will form a double shared pair in the middle so that each of these atoms has the sensation or the feeling that it has eight electrons filling its outer orbit. And this, like hydrogen and fluorine, is a diatomic molecule, and it is O2. But in this case, the O2 is formed by a double bond, sharing two pairs of electrons between the oxygen atoms. Nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, meaning three empty spaces. So again, the electrons can be rearranged in a way that we can get three pairs of electrons being shared in the middle. And in sharing those three pairs of electrons, each of these nitrogen atoms has the sensation of eight filling that outer orbit, giving us an N2 molecule. And those two nitrogen atoms are held together by a triple bond, sharing three pairs of electrons. So, it's not always pairs. We can also have covalent bond between many atoms. And here we have an example of nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen and hydrogen form ammonia. Now, nitrogen, once again, has three empty spaces due to its five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one and is looking for a pair. So if each hydrogen atom moves in and pairs in that empty space with the nitrogen atom, we get a situation where three hydrogens pair to one nitrogen, 
each of the hydrogens follows the rule of duet, two electrons in its outer shell, and the nitrogen has eight electrons now in its outer shell from that sharing, giving us an NH3 molecule, and the N would be in the center and would be single bonded to each of the individual hydrogens, forming that NH3 molecule. Now water is probably the most abundant and more, most readily available of the covalent molecules, and oxygen again has six valence electrons in its outer orbit. It is looking to share in two spaces on its outer orbit, and hydrogen can foot the bill once again, with each hydrogen filling one of those empty spaces. The oxygen now has eight electrons in its outer orbit, and each of the hydrogens follows that rule of duet, giving us the H2O molecule, the dihydrogen monoxide, that we talked about so readily at the beginning of the semester. And our molecule is an oxygen with a single bond to each hydrogen. So this water molecule is a covalent molecule. Now, as a reminder, we are trying to fulfill the rule of octet, and whether the bonding is ionic or covalent, the atoms are trying to fill their outermost shell. Ions give up or take on electrons to fill that outer shell. Atoms share electrons to fill the outer orbital, and they seek to satisfy the rule of octet, eight electrons in that outer shell, to become stable like the noble gases. Now, hydrogen and helium do not follow the rule of octet, and why? Because they only have a 1s orbital, they are only looking for two electrons to stabilize that single orbit. Now, for covalent molecules, when we name them, the first element will retain the elemental name. The second element will always end in ide, I-D-E, and we will take the subscript and note them by prefixes. And the prefix mono will never be used with the first element. So if we have NO, we are dealing with nitrogen monoxide because mono means one, and the oxide refers to oxygen. SF5 is sulfur penta fluoride. Penta is the prefix for five, sulfur keeping its name, the fluorine becoming fluoride, and the penta telling us there are five fluorines. And then P3O6 is triphosphorus hexoxide, where tri means three of the phosphorus, and hexa refers to six of the oxygen. And the prefix we will be using are mono for one, di for two, tri for three, tetra is four, and remember the game Tetris, each of those pieces has four parts, making it a Tetris, a tetrad, or tetra. Penta, like the pentagon, has five. Hexa is six. Hepta is seven. Octa is eight. Nana is nine. And Deca is ten. So, we have two handouts available on the Sophia. One has a series of molecular compounds in formula, which I would like you to name. And then the second one has a series of names, and I would like you to write the formula. So go ahead and print those out, fill them in, and come back and see how you did. So CO2, carbon dioxide, CO, carbon monoxide, SO2, sulfur dioxide, SO3, sulfur trioxide, N2O, dinitrogen monoxide, N2O3, 
dinitrogen trioxide, NO2 nitrogen dioxide, and 2O4 dinitrogen tetroxide. Notice I drop the A and keep the O tetroxide, N2O5 dinitrogen pentoxide, PCl3 phosphorus trichloride, PCl3 again, hmm, phosphorus trichloride, PCl5 phosphorus pentachloride, NH3 is nitrogen trihydride, that is known as ammonia, and we will most often use the term ammonia for NH3. SCl6 is sulfur hexachloride. P2O5, diphosphorus pentoxide. CCl4, carbon tetrafluoride, or chloride. Hmm, that should be chloride for CCl4. SiO2, silicon dioxide. CS3, carbon trisulfide, OF2, oxygen difluoride, and PBr3, phosphorus tribromide. So let's look at the names to formula. So here we have sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. We have calcium sulfate. Now this is not covalent. This is an ionic formula and it would be CaSO4. Iron phosphide, FEP, that also is ionic. Trinitrogen pentachloride, N3Cl5. Magnesium phosphate, Mg3PO42. Potassium permanganate, KMnO4. Phosphorus hexaiodide, Pi6. Copper 2 chloride, CuCl2, carbon pentafluoride, CF5, dinitrogen hexachloride, N2Cl6, tin 4 salt phosphate, SN3, PO4, 4, trisulfur trichloride, S3Cl3, magnesium oxide, MgO, ammonium acetate, NH4, C2H3O2, sulfur dibromide, SBr2, and mercury 2 fluoride, HGF2. So here we have a combination of both ionic and covalent molecules and their formulas. So hopefully that's a good insight for you into covalent bonding and how covalent or molecular bonds are formed by the sharing of electrons.